guys, Badabing here, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tokyo Marui MTR-16 Gas Blowback Rifle. Wolf Armouries have made my day, once again, by sending me TM's recent Gas Blowback Rifle to review. They've been a big help by keeping me fed with all these glorious toys. A cool crisp high five to them for making this video possible. And if you're sitting comfortably, then we will begin. TM have a new addition to their gas blowback rifle line with this new MTR-16. This is something that they've designed themselves. Well, I actually don't think it's modelled after a specific real-world carbine. But now that I've said that, there are countless amounts of AR manufacturers out there, so it's really hard to know anyway. The MTR borrows elements from three-gun competition-style rifles, and as it uses the same MWS gas system present on its older siblings, it is a perfect candidate for high-speed competition shooting. They are in a class of their own when it comes to the presentation. Nobody does it better. Inside, the rifle is held in place by the usual Velcro straps, and the foam panels within the lid that keeps everything in its place. The manual is located on the lid itself, tucked behind a cardboard sleeve, inside a Ziploc bag, along with the usual paperwork, targets, and a cool MTR-16 poster. Additional accessories in the box include a selection of M-Lock barrel panels, muzzle cap, two Allen keys, cleaning rod, BB loader, and some sample BBs. Taking the MTR in hand for the first time reveals a solid overall frame that weighs 2.3 kilograms without its 20 round magazine. Including the mag, it only weighs 2.6 kilograms, all before you put any accessories onto the rifle, so this is a perfect lightweight platform to build a DMR, recce rifle, or that competition rifle. As I said, the construction is solid, and the receivers are pinned together without any wobbling whatsoever. I'd imagine this would change with use, but for the time being it's all well made and solid. Looking at the MTR's features, starting at the front we have a two port muzzle brake attached to a 16 inch outer barrel that is finished with a spiral fluting running along its length. A carbine length low profile gas block hides beneath Marui's free float M lock rail system, which is as long as a runway. It can accept the included M lock rail panels on the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. Furthermore, it has two QD sling points just ahead of the barrel nut. The alignment of the 12 o'clock rail to the receiver is dead on to my eye. The receiver doesn't share many components with its previous M4s. Nothing looks standard here. It would be much quicker to say that the only things that both M4 and MTR share are the takedown pins. We've got an entire ambidextrous fire control suite, magazine catch, bolt catch, selector, charging handle, all lefty friendly. The magazine button, and B bolt catch, and charging handle especially, makes it even more convenient to operate. Leaving no stone left unturned, they've even showed the dust cover and trigger guard some attention. I'm not sure where they were going with this trigger guard, but it's there. Likewise, they've changed the forward assist. Well, they haven't changed it, they've just taken it out. The grip is something else they've changed. At first I didn't know what to make of it, judging from the pictures that I saw, but now that I've had hands-on experience, I quite like it. The straighter angle felt awkward to begin with. Slowly, I've warmed up to its affections, and if this were my rifle, I'd leave it where it is. The trigger... is... flat. Usually, you have some indication where to place your finger when using a traditional AR trigger, but I have no idea where to place mine on this flat surface. If you can't tell, this is my first time with a flat trigger. I'll have to come back to you on this one. Moving along, we find another QD sling point on the receiver end plate that joins another two that can be found on the weird and wonderful stock. It's a low profile stock, however it's anything but boring to look at. The button to extend is a small piece that allows for five positions of adjustment, and its tail piece can be reversed to create a concave surface to hug the natural curvature of your shoulder. The finish of the rifle is simply gorgeous. The metal receiver set has a smooth to the touch Serico treatment in a matte grey colour. I'd love to know the actual designation of it. The Serico finish on my M4 NWS has a darker tone in comparison. There's not much else to say. It's stunning. The MTR markings do look to be printed onto the surface. That's about the extent of the horrors that I can see so far. 
Moving on to the internals now, and everything looks exactly the same as their previous GBBRs, apart from the ambidextrous bolt catch and the blatantly different silver bolt carrier. The Marui MWS gas system has been combat tested by many users, and the only thing you would have to watch out for are failures of the nozzle spring and the plastic buffer. These would be the weakest links to the TM rifle when using green gas. But don't let that put you off. The good thing is both of these can be replaced very easily and without breaking the bank. I've been using green gas, or mainly propane in my MWS since day one, and the nozzle spring broke over one year into its service life. Bear in mind that this came from the very first MWS batch out of the factory, and in that time it blasted through several thousands of rounds. I replaced the nozzle spring with an upgraded set, and there hasn't been a single fault since. Even though the MTR has a 16-inch outer barrel, it still uses the same 250mm inner barrel that the M4 uses. Using green gas and point twos, it produces an FPS just over 300, which is about what you'd expect for an airsoft gun coming out of Japan. The MTR is an incredible shooter, in the same way the M4 is. Every shot is so crisp and precise. The cycle happens so quickly that it's a piece of cake to smash through a magazine in seconds. And I'm not talking about when it's being used in fully auto either. As I've said in my previous review of the MWS, the premise of their gas system is grounded on a concept that provides durability and reliability. They wanted it to be functionally practical and not try to rewrite the physics textbooks by accounting for high realism and heavy recoil in an attempt to make it all work with their recommended gas. People have asked if TM have done any work on the trigger. To be honest, I can't tell. Yes, it feels better than the stock M4 trigger, but that could all be the fact that it's still brand new, and my M4 is well scrubbed in at this point. The take-up is short, with a clearer definition of the edge of the brake. Once it's gone, the reset to travel is equally as short, and ends its journey exactly on the reset, with a positive click. Even though it feels cleaner than the stock M4 trigger, I'm still not a fan of it. Not when I've been spoiled by the one found on the GHK M4. The way the MTR is set up, with its straighter grip, places your trigger finger in a corrected angle to take advantage of the natural mechanics of your pull, which in turn means one can theoretically run the gun faster. All it takes is practice. I still don't know whether I prefer the flat edge or the curved. Perhaps I'll never know. The 328 gram 20 round magazine has enough gas capacity to dump those 20 shots on automatic with ease. It also has a gas tank that I've recorded 40 shots total before it's empty, so it's not bad considering the size of it in relation to what it's powering. It's not too different to the amount of gas within a pistol magazine. The accuracy of this rifle is identical to what you'd find on the regular MWS, because after all, they're both the same underneath. At 20 meters, using Jeff's Bio 3s, I put together these two sets of results. 
The left target was made by my own 35-round magazine, and the right was the short 20-rounder. So, out of the box, the MTR has good accuracy as standard. If this were mine, I'd be happy to use this, as it is, and get a lot of enjoyment from it. I've done the same with my M4. Of course, it goes without saying, it can be further improved, with some light upgrades and heavier BBs. You know those guys that only prefer wood on AKs? I'm kind of the same when it comes to M4s. Anything that's produced nowadays is so far from the how they used to be, I typically don't think they look good anymore. Since I've had this rifle to play with, my opinion has shifted somewhat. So I'm either naturally warming to their affections, or I'm being conditioned. In that argument, it's probably the latter. Without my personal tastes coming into it, the Tokyo Mavuri MTR-16 is another fine GBBR right from its well-designed box. The finish is superb. It's a solidly constructed platform that has a crisp and snappy shooting performance with a good out-of-the-box accuracy. It's lightweight and handy, the functions are all positive, it's completely ambidextrous, it has a wide range of aftermarket upgrades, and it's built upon TM's reliable gas blowback Z system. Any bad news to speak of? Yeah, yeah there is, but it's not really a letdown. First of all, the price of the rifle is on the heavier side. It is recommended to be used on weaker gas, although everyone outside of Japan have been known to use green gas successfully. The look of the rifle may not be to everybody's tastes. The hop-up adjustment is annoying to get to. As with the M4, the rail can be tricky to replace, in many cases needing an adapter. It's not as realistic as other gas blowback competitors, and original Marui spares can be difficult to locate. So apart from that, if you're interested in buying a gas blowback M4, but fancy something a bit different, or if you're looking for a sweet little recce rifle or competition gun, I would wholeheartedly recommend the MTR-16. The retail price is high, this is true, however it is a beautifully lightweight and manoeuvrable carbine that will work in multiple roles. You've also got the benefit of its ambidextrous controls, which is very reminiscent of the HK416A5. All these enhancements are built onto a foundation that stands as one of the best gas blowback AR-15s available. A weapon system which I continue to describe as one that I have absolute confidence in. Don't just take my word for it, go ahead and look at the feedback on forums and Facebook groups. Check out the link below where you can buy your very own MTR-16, and once again, Thanks to Wolf Armories for sending me this rifle to review. If you've enjoyed this video, why not show me by hitting the like, and if you're new here, why not subscribe and be notified when my next video goes live. For regular updates, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. So until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in a bit.